Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome to my first ever live stream. I hope we're up and running. Of course, this is my first go, so please do excuse me if anywhere I've got anything slightly wrong. I'm looking forward to seeing some of you guys join because today we're going to get started with a bit of a Q&A, some questions and answers. I did one recently, but you guys asked me so many questions that I wanted to allow more of you to come in and we can have a little chit chat about some things from the latest news in the car world as well. I want to talk about stuff to do with Bitcoin and wow, the messages are piling in. You guys are here. Thank you very much. Oh my goodness, um, it's going to be quite hard to keep up with this chat room, I can tell that right now. Um, I've seen loads of your questions coming in on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter already. Um, <laughs> I'm just watching your messages, this is going to be uh, quite interesting. First thing I just want to say by the way, I hope you're all happy with using the name Squad. It was suggested by some of you guys, I think it's quite cool. It ties in with the usual, I guess, slightly nerdy, jokey, shmi things, but I think it's a bit of fun. I appreciate all of your support, the guys who come in watch these videos early, whether you take uh, your time, watch them later on, it's all good, I really appreciate it, thank you so much, all, I guess, one and a bit million of you now, which is still absolutely crazy. Now, I'm sitting here watching at this live chat window, and I'm not going to lie, guys, but this is going to be really, really hard to keep up with you guys, so um, let me uh, just see what I can pick out on the way through, um, yeah, 150 messages per minute, it's telling me. So, I can't even read them. <laughs> right, here we go, here we go. So the one I've just landed on as it happens is uh, from Ilias Sankar. Will you buy the GTC4 Lusso? That's something loads of you asked me about my FF. And in fact, you're all asking me where is the FF because I haven't driven it for a while. Well, when I got the AMG GTR, um, I pretty much parked the other cars in my garage. Then, as you probably know, I went to Dubai for a couple of weeks. So when I came back from Dubai... Uh, I then came over to Germany with the Mercedes and I basically not really driven everything or anything in that time apart from the Focus a little bit and the Mercedes. So the FF is currently in my garage. It went back to my Ferrari dealer uh, for a service, annual service and a warranty checkup because the car is now, believe it or not, nearly six years old, which is crazy. So the car is just being making sure everything is completely fine with it. Um, <laughs> I've just seen Misha's pop up. Um, everything is completely, uh, completely fine with it back in the garage. So when I get back to England for Christmas and New Year, I'll be able to drive it again. But otherwise, it's it's been parked up. Now, longer term, I would love a Ferrari GTC for this, so the natural upgrade. Uh, but at the moment, UK cars, right-hand drive UK cars, still carry a bit of a premium completely top pricing levels so I'll need to wait a while until they come down because I don't want to buy a car like that and just stick it in the garage and not drive it. I know that sounds a little bit strange after what I've just told you about my FF but the FF uh, it's two years old for me. I've done about 20,000 miles in it and if I do the same in a brand new Lusso, bye bye value. Um, so a little bit sensible head on that. Um, what I was going to say about Misha's Super chat message, Misha Charidin from Apex in uh, the Nürburgring. Uh, sub to him, guys, if you're not already, sub to Misha. Uh, always a shout out. So let us have a little look through some of these messages then. There are a lot of you here and it's hard to keep up. I've seen lots of messages about different countries to visit. I have seen messages about coming to uh, Portugal, Australia, Brazil, Sri Lanka. Guys, trust me, I would love to visit everywhere in the world. And I think a little bit for 2018, I would like to travel to places that are a little bit more outside the box. Obviously, there will be trips to Dubai, to Monaco, to the textbook, I suppose, locations with supercars. But I'd like to explore further. So if you know of a really good event that happens in your country or something that could be awesome to see that I've not previously covered, do be sure to try and let us know whether that's in YouTube comments or ping a message to the Shmi150 Facebook page where maybe we can pick it up there. It'd be really awesome to find out about things in countries that I've never necessarily previously filmed. Um, but otherwise, the new year is going to start in a very exciting international way, so I'm looking forward to it. I've seen a few messages about doing a meetup here in Frankfurt. Well, I'm in my flat now in Frankfurt with some lovely IKEA furniture and a new TV, obviously with the Shmi channel. You can watch on TV. We're enjoying watching YouTube here. Um, but I've not really been to any events that happen here. And I'm looking forward until there is an event that happens here in Frankfurt that I can attend and let you guys know that I'm at. But otherwise, you might have seen the video driving uh, the AMG GTR in the snow at Grosser Feldberg, the nearby mountain about 40 minutes away from central Frankfurt. Well, that was awesome fun. Um, amazing trip up there. So let me try and head back a little bit. Here's an interesting question from Vincent 
Uh, Van der Moylen, I hope I pronounced that right, Vincent. Do you miss the GT4? So some of you will remember my Cayman GT4. Of course, since I sold that car just over a year ago, there are probably a couple of hundred thousand new subscribers. So many of you will never have seen the Cayman GT4. Well, it was an epic machine. We did some amazing miles in it. And at the end, actually, I traded it back into the Porsche dealer because I wanted to go for the GT3 next. So that is coming, as you know. The car is not too far off from being ready now. I'm going to let you know, obviously, when I've got more information about it. But, um, the, um, yeah, GT3 will be ready, hopefully, early in the new year. So, a couple of other questions. Do you still own the GT8? Yes, I still have my Aston Martin GT8. Um, 314 messages per minute, guys. That is <laughs> an amount that I'm not going to be able to keep up on. Um, so let's, let's pick out the, uh, questions that are in the super chat. What do we have here? Rudolf van der Ven. Um, sound like you're from the Netherlands, I presume. Uh, still not thinking about that Aventador. Um, I've never really been that keen on Aventadors or Aventador SVs. I'm not going to lie. And the reason for that is I find them firstly, hugely awkward cars to drive. They're massive, weird, clunky gearboxes. Um, yes, admittedly, the engine is awesome. Um, and as a supercar, it's almost the definition. It's ferocious, it's wild in terms of looks and practicality, and it's completely, well, not the most useful car in the world, which arguably is what a supercar should be. Um, but they've never really stood out to me, so the Aventador is not really, not really my thing. I think it's just a little bit almost too brash for me, I could say. So let me try and pick up back on the, uh, on the questions here, guys. Loads and loads of questions following on from the event store about the Urus, about the Lamborghini Urus. Well, I've not seen or filmed the new car yet. I couldn't make it to the launch at the factory, something you might have seen that they did a live stream on. Uh, interesting one, that. But hopefully I'll be able to see it at some point very soon because I would like to get a closer look at it. Honestly, I'm not personally that interested in the Hurricanes or the event stores, but the Urus is potentially the one I would, the Lamborghini I might be tempted to buy. Um, I don't really need necessarily the practicality of an SUV, but I'd love to drive the things. So fingers crossed there'll be some test drives not too far away from now, because I'd love to experience it. So let us go through some more questions from Liam Evans. Do you regret the AMG GTR purchase now that there's potentially a more powerful version coming? Well, I just did my Fuel for Thought video about that, my Fuel for Thought series, a return to that, having not done them for a while. And I think this is obviously triggered by Jeremy Clarkson in the second episode of the Grand Tour. If you haven't seen that, he drove the AMG GTR. He wasn't necessarily a massive fan of it, but he alluded to the fact that the Mercedes E63 S and S63 have more power out of the same engine because they both have the 4-litre bi-turbo V8 with 612 horsepower, whereas the GTR only has 585 horsepower. Well, I think that does kind of suggest that there is room to take power up even more. However, the reason for more power is due to different turbos, which require different packaging setups, which mean that not necessarily is it possible to stick the bigger engine in the GTR. However, were there to be a new car, Mercedes have made it very clear that the title Black Series is dead. That's not going to exist again. So it's not going to be called the Black Series. However, they've also just released the GT4 race car that I got to drive at Paul Ricard. So maybe there could be an inspiration of the GT4 race car in a seriously, seriously, seriously limited road going GTR. That's possible down the lines. Um, I don't really know, to be honest. And if I did know, I would probably not be allowed to say. So you've got to remember that one. Uh, let's head back to these questions. Um, this is really, really tough. I basically have to stop it scrolling and just pick one of your questions out, guys. So, um, where are we? Oh gosh, I've scrolled down too much and I've lost it all. I've lost it all. Okay, here we go. Why does an AMG GTR look like a Porsche from Andre Schultz? I'm not necessarily sure it does, given that the engine is in a very different place. The AMG GT cars, the GT, GTS, GTC, and the GTR, have this ginormously long bonnet out front, whereas Porsches have a really short bonnet, um, because the engine is obviously rear-mounted, which is what I find so interesting about the comparison that I'll be able to make between the AMG GTR and the Porsche GT3. They are very similarly priced. I think actually the price tags come out within about a thousand pounds. They do very similar Nürburgring times. The GTR did seven minutes 11 and the GT3 did seven minutes 13, but obviously so different in the sense of the engine being in front or behind. 
So I'm looking forward to driving them back to back, really, and being able to tell you a little bit more about them. Equally, I need to drive back to back the GTR and my GT8, because they both have engines in front, rear wheel drive, but one has a double clutch, one has a manual. Um, the GT8 is more expensive, less fast, and less powerful. Yes, I agree that logic doesn't make sense. It is more limited, though. So let us have another look down here. Am I going to Dubai anytime shortly from Mohammed? Hi, Cal. Well, I've just been to Dubai. I made loads of videos in the three weeks I was there. It was an epic trip, some amazing stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed those videos. I'm hoping to go back again for sure. There's plenty more. This is what I find every time I go to Dubai. There is such a crazy supercar scene, and all of the guys out there that I meet are so phenomenally hospitable. I just find I get invited to everything, and there's not enough time for it. So I have to plan another another trip just to go back to do the things that I didn't do the last time. And then more things come up and then I need to go back again. So maybe sometime I should just base myself in Dubai for a bit and spend some time out there. Um, let's head back into these questions then, guys, that we've got here. Wow, so many of you viewing. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of these comments. Ah, I've lost it. I've lost it. I've actually lost it. I had to like scroll up a little bit more to actually slow it down. Um, what do I think about Rimac? Well, I'm sure lots of you saw the Rimac Concept 1 on the Grand Tour as well. I think electric cars in general are a hugely interesting topic. I think we're at this cusp where it's about to become significantly more mainstream, both in terms of the technology of electric cars, but also in terms of the technology of autonomous driving and shared vehicle ownership, where we basically rent cars that are constantly on the move, never have to park anywhere, and it's all a much more efficient ecosystem in terms of cars, which also means fewer traffic jams. I think what's interesting for me is where that means my channel will go, because at the moment, obviously, it's about filming the noisiest, most dramatic, loud, extreme cars that I can possibly find, whereas in the future, I'm probably just going to be sitting in a seat with no steering wheel in silence. But I'll be trying to bring you the latest in automotive, wherever automotive goes, and how that channels itself down the line. Could be quite interesting to see. So let's run back into here. Uh, a few questions about what will I do with the AMG GTR? Will it go to Brabus, Rentec? Will I modify it? And I think the first modification, if you can call it a modification, was going to be the wrap. But I told you that at the moment there are no plans to wrap it. Maybe I'll put some accents on or a design, but it's going to be black. It is the beast of the black hell. It is so cool and menacing and stealthy in black, especially now with the black wheels, thanks to Posh Wash, getting rid of that silver rim that we all, well, I hated, some of you liked. Um, so it's going to stay like that. In terms of the future, I don't know. There's a loose, I have a loose temptation to change the suspension, give it bigger turbos, change the downpipe. There's no point in changing the exhaust. Anybody who says change the exhaust on an AMG GTR, it is a full titanium exhaust from the back box point of view from the factory. When you have valves open in loud mode it is straight it is a straight pipe you can't make it louder so you have to change other parts of the end in down pipes and then you risk messing with cats and emissions and that kind of stuff so we will see what i want to do down the lines of that in due course but for the moment changing the exhaust would be crazy so let's uh, head to a message here from simon callum uh cost aside do you reckon it's best to go for an amg gtr or a GTC, given the intention of not taking it to the track. Now, Simon, uh, Merry Christmas to you too. I think it's quite interesting between the two, because honestly, when I drove the GTC Roadster in Arizona at the launch, the thing that amazed me the most was how similar that was to the GTR. I'm a big fan of roof down, especially with the crackles from the exhaust. However, the GTR does have the variable traction control, which if you like misbehaving is obviously very fun. Um, addictively fun, believe me, especially if it snows. Um, but really, really speaking, they are very, very similar. The slight visual differences at the rear, you'll see the diffuser and bumper and exhaust setup is slightly different. But the GTC is a phenomenal car with a much shorter wait list. That is a major advantage. If you want to order a new car, the GTC, I guess, is probably four or five, six months, whereas the GTR, I think now it's like 18 months, especially in the UK. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, there are, I suppose options and if you're not desperately fussed for out and out lap times gtc is probably the car to go for uh, edition 50 if there is one roadster if you like the top down um very similar cars so let's just have a look message here from jonta pettis have you ever owned an american car other than a ford brand no i haven't i've owned my focus rs i will soon own a focus rs edition which is the updated car with a limited slip diff carbon interior trim and some painted bits, basically just to move to a newer one. And of course, I have the order for the Ford GT, which is due 
loads of questions about this, which is due in the later half of 2019. So that is still quite a long way away, potentially nearly two years away, which frustrates me, but it will come when it comes. It's going to be very special. So I'm not, and I don't really know why. For example, I drove the Corvette Z06, which was awesome. The new Corvette, the uh, ZL1, is it ZL1? I think so, is looking like crazy. The thing that was launched at the Dubai Motor Show, walking around that, my goodness, that looked absolutely nuts. Um, I don't really know why I haven't. The prices in the UK tend to cost more than the equivalents because there are loads of import taxes and fees and things. So they ship them over, then convert them and then add tax. So it gets really expensive. Um, maybe in the future, maybe in the future, something else will stand out um, from over there. But we have, I don't know, different styles of cars. So let's head back to the questions, guys. Wow, this still moves so quickly. You guys are awesome. Um, let's have a look here at what we've got. <laughs> yeah, seeing a few things about will I stop by somebody's house. Guys, I would love to stop by everyone's house, but unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult. I can see lots of you being like, yes, the 4 GT will be quite outdated by 2019. And this is one of the interesting things, because it would be awesome for me, obviously, to have had an earlier allocation so I could share the car when it was still brand new and super exciting. Don't get me wrong, I think it's always going to be exciting because of the way it's built as a car from entering Le Mans converting that to the road and it's so much more visceral and hardcore than your regular road track cars like your 675 LT or your Ferrari Speciale or your Performante or that kind of thing it's much more intense and involving uh, involving sorry than those cars are um it's clearly a very special collector's car so I would love to have it as part of my long-term collection if you could see it that way um what I'm trying to grow with my 675 LT Spider and my Vantage GT8 now actually that's an interesting cop topic to move on to. Those cars featured prominently in the content last year. Of course, the LT's done many things, track days, autobahns, Nürburgring, loads of trips and adventures, um, Top Marks, Monaco, where Schmi tour at the beginning of the year. The GT8 did Fuel Faction, Douay around Italy, um, <clears throat> Chase the Mille Amelia. It went up to Scotland for a bit. But I basically see them as the cars that I used primarily in 2017's content and will now almost Retire from the forefront while the AMG GTR and the Porsche GT3 take that space. Still be there. I'll still go to McLaren events, Aston Martin events, and they will remain in my garage, but more for a bit more personal use rather than so much right out there in the video content. I think it's fun to refresh and go through different cars while I still, behind the scenes, grow a car collection because ultimately that's, I suppose, my passion. I'm a bit of a, a hoarder, but <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice, but supercars are my thing. Um, so I want to grow up something that potentially. My dream one day would be to have like a Shmi clubhouse that you guys could come down to, the cars could be on display and that we could hang out there. So that's, you know, would be the absolute dream. I'm just going to have a quick drink right now because my voice is slowly um, dying on me. So let's move on. What else do we have? More questions about will I come to different countries? Um, as always, guys, looking out for different events, whatever may be happening. So by all means, let me know and uh, what you know of that's happening in your area over the next year and we'll see what we can what we can manage to so let's head back to these questions this is literally the fastest moving <laughs> question section i've ever tried to follow in my life um i've seen a few things about the tesla roadster um we'll keep it simple uh Vietz Berger literally just said tesla roadster question mark let's talk about the tesla roadster because i think a lot of people are Intrigued about that. Tesla have this huge amount of hype behind them. It's literally the major hype train. It's a bit like Apple with iPhones and iPads and that kind of stuff. Um, the Tesla Roadster is forecast to release in 2020, so another two and a half, three years maybe before it's out, assuming they can manage on time. I mean, all the best. I hope that car comes very soon, but look at delays to Model 3 and other Tesla models, and you start to see that there's there's a lot of work that needs to be done in quite a tight, uh, tight time frame. Um, I think for when you look at the base numbers and you think $250,000, that would probably convert in Europe to £250,000, €300,000 when you add taxes and things. But for a car with those numbers, that capability, 0 to 62 miles an hour, top speed of 250, are you crazy? It is insane. Let's see when it comes out, see if the technology can manage it, see if Tesla can stay afloat as a business. They're costing huge amounts of money. So fingers crossed for them, because if electric cars can do that, the world is going to be a good place, and I, for one, look forward to it an awful lot. 
Now, I see many questions of would I consider replacing my McLaren 675 LT Spider with the McLaren 720S? So I've picked out one here from Hazik Arif. Um, in short, no. If I get a 720S, it would be as well as because I consider it much more a GT car than the out and out driving experience car. Plus, my LT Spider, in my color, with my spec and the stories and adventures I've taken it on, that car's not going anywhere in a hurry. It is so special and personal to me that it would take a lot to get it out of my hands, and probably nobody would want to do that. Anyway, let's uh, continue here. Um, okay, lots of questions about what cars for the future. I'll just pick out one right here. ARJ Gaming, are you going to get a BMW M2 CS? Now, as you know, Mark, business manager for Shmiel 50, who's in some of my videos and regularly helps with all of these comments and different bits and bobs on social media. He drives a BMW M2 that he did like 30,000 kilometers in in a year, because he's nuts, <laughs> but it was awesome fun. Did lots of modifications to it. I showed you the video when we went to Krapovich uh, to install the exhaust system. So there are lots of murmurs and whispers about what's coming with the M2. Expect a harder core version, and Mark will no doubt be right in that. He's massive in the M2 community. Um, for what that is, whether it's a competition, a CS, lots of dreams of a CSL, we'll have to wait and see. I don't entirely know. Um, down the line, um, let us keep going down. Wow. Okay, guys. Okay. Ah, steady on, steady on. <laughs> it's really hard to do this. A few comments I've just spotted about would I ever do a gaming channel. Um, as much as I do have my TV behind me with an Xbox One X underneath it, and I did play Forza very briefly to drive the GTR, you might have seen that with Benzene, I don't really spend very much time sitting at home, whether that's home here in Frankfurt, Germany, or home in London, England, I'm pretty much always on the move, and when I am at home, it's catching up with emails, accounts, boring stuff, really boring stuff that I don't film, so unfortunately, um... Yeah, I, I wish I did. I honestly wish I did. Because back in the day, uh, when Forza Horizon 2 came out, I was in the US for a couple of months, and we started a team, um, a club on Forza Horizon 2, and I think it got to number four on the game, which was awesome. I don't know if any of you guys were in that back then. Um, what else do we have here? Ah, Bronco Bill. I have a Griffith also. Yes, guys, I announced I had ordered the new TBR Griffith. I don't think there's any new news on the TBR Griffith at the moment, but I'm looking forward to it because, come on, nearly 500 horsepower, manual, car that weighs just over 1,200 kilos. That's going to be awesome fun. Awesome, awesome fun. So, oh my goodness, it still moves really, really quick. So, yeah, just, just on what I was talking about before from Barlon Kesto. Balon Chesto, maybe? Any more GT8 content? There will be more stuff with the GT8 and the LT. It's not like they've gone, but they're not going to go primarily at the forefront. Maybe when we do, if we do another fuel faction uh, trip somewhere, if we do, it has to be somewhere really cool. That's like my absolute criteria. Maybe I take the whole fleet. Maybe, one idea, tell me if you guys would like to see this. Um, the last two years, when the Nürburgring opens for the season, they have a big event called Car Freitag on Easter weekend, which literally means Car Friday. Um, when the track opens for Tourist and Farton. I'm loosely pondering heading down in March, when that would be, with the GT3, the GTR, the GT8, the LT, and the Focus RS Edition, if it's here by then, because those will be my five cars, other than the FF, that all have bucket seats, and they all have spoilers on the back, which is kind of cool, I think. So it'd be fun to take them all down, and the create colours, the colours of that lineup would just be nuts. Um, so let's go back few comments about Gumball from uh, Stunt M4N8 and from Zane Winder here. Um, Gumball 3000 2018, it's a big anniversary rally in August, and they're going from London all the way to Tokyo, Japan. So it's London down through France, through Italy, where they catch a flight to Japan and then drive up um, and end in Tokyo, which sounds freaking awesome to me. I've never been to Japan in my life. Um, but normally with Gumball, it's massively complicated. The logistics are just crazy. Last year was the first one I hadn't done in six years um, because it clashed with the Goodwood Festival of Speed. So I've got to wait and see what happens, see what the dates are like, and yeah, just you know, go with it. See if if Gumball would like to have me. We'll see in due course. Um, any teams maybe that I can join on the trip? I'm not entirely sure. So back to the questions here. Here's an interesting one from Alpha Scotia. Uh, hi, Tim. Do you have any plans for Bespoke Shmi live events hosted by yourself, Ben, Queen Bee, and others? Well, this would be really cool. However, what I can tell you is Autosport at the NEC in January. So it runs from, I have to check this, the 11th to the 14th of January. 
at the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham, England. And like last year, I'll be back in the live arena, so I'll be able to, well, you guys will be able to come along and watch and hopefully have one or two of my cars there as well. Fingers crossed. I'll give you more information when all is confirmed and locked up, but it would be awesome if I can be there. So hopefully watch this space for that one. So, wow. Um, hey, there's a nice question. Are you home for Christmas from JD? I'm going to be home for Christmas. Um, I'm hoping to be home for Christmas at least. No, I'm going to jump in the AMG GTR and drive it back from Frankfurt to London just before Christmas. One or two cool things prepared for Christmas video wise. Uh, it might be a very hypercar Christmas New Year. Not, not for me, but for cool videos. So stay tuned for Christmas Day. Looking forward to sharing something special on that day, if not in the build up to then. So, um, what else do we have here? Loads of questions about cars. Oh, what was your first car? We can discuss my first car from Night Boost Gamer. My first car, some of you might know if you do ping it in right now. How many times is this going to go crazy? If you don't know my first car, it was a 2005 Renault Clio 1.2 with a whopping 72 horsepower. And it was, in, it was, I've lost my words. It was so much fun, the freedom to get out and about. I did, I had it for three and a half years, so the longest I ever owned a car. And I did 33,000 miles in it. I went to France, I went to Switzerland, all sorts of road trips. That really got me started. I think the freedom to just escape and go off and travel around um, on your own. So here we have a question coming in. <laughs> That's not a serious question. Popperlock85 said, serious question. Do ladies prefer you to talk car specs or make engine sounds when you're in an intimate setting with them? Can you imagine, guys? You're uh, on a private date with a, with a girl and you start beating over the, like, horsepower figures, newton meter figures, all the details, 0-62s, all the stats about a car. I don't think that's going to go down very well. Um, nor would uh, making the noise of a car either. Anyway. This does have a second part, which I think is a really interesting topic right now, which is when are you planning to purchase your first car using Bitcoin? Now, loads of you guys have probably seen recently dealers around the world offering cars price tagged in Bitcoins, the cryptocurrency that you know a little bit about. I talked a little bit about in my recent or most recent Q&A. Um, Bitcoins are something that I loosely dabbled in when it was brand new, but got out of ages ago. So I'm not involved in cryptocurrency stuff, Bitcoin, Litecoin, any other coin, whatever they are. Um, and clearly it's massively on a hype train right now. But there are lots and lots of traditional investment firms giving very, I think, serious warning messages about this bubble that could potentially completely evaporate. So Bitcoins are now, have they hit $20,000 or something per coin? If not, they're very close which is why you're seeing adverts for like Ferrari F12 for 12 Bitcoins, um, which seems really quite bizarre that you could have had a cryptocurrency that you mined with your computer a few years ago, earned some money out of, and now you can buy a Ferrari with it. I think it will be interesting in the future when more prices and more products, cars and otherwise are offered in Bitcoin value. Um, and we're probably going to head towards that way, aren't we? Um, Bitcoin or different currencies. But um, yeah, who who really um, knows where that's going. I, I mean, it's it's a very quickly evolving world, changing incredibly fast. So here's a question from Marvin uh, Cabs, C-A-B-Z. Tim, why did you name your channel Shmi150? This is a question that al always gets asked. Whenever people, some of you guys meet me, you often ask me, why Shmi? Why Shmi150? Well, rewinding back, when I was significantly younger, um, let's go back maybe 20 years. And I started signing up online for things in the days of MSN Messenger, Hotmail email addresses, um, early online gaming, like even probably genuinely before uh, ADSL Internet. We're talking dial up 32.2K dial up Internet here. I remember signing up for some things under the name Shmi or playing basic games as Shmi. I think maybe like Dreamcast days if anybody was around then. Um, so. And basically what happened was once upon a time, I reached a website where Shmi was already taken. So someone else out there actually had Shmi and it offered me, would you like Shmi 98765 or Shmi 11111 or Shmi 150? And I just clicked it. And from then on, it stuck. And it's now the name that I use on YouTube because my YouTube channel was actually in the past videos of messing around with friends at school, uh, skiing holidays. And it wasn't really intended to be cars. That kind of happened 
a little bit by accident, but it stuck around. I appreciate you guys still watching, even though I have a bizarre name that doesn't mean anything to do with cars, you know. Uh, I think lots of channels out there have things that are vastly more appropriate, like Supercars of London or Vehicle Virgins, for example. And sometimes I think it would have been better if I had started with a car-themed name, but now I quite like it. Shmi has almost become my nickname. It's something unique. We get to play around with silly things like Shmi Mobile and Squad. I know they're completely, in a way, childish, but I enjoy it. I think it's a nice connection and thing to talk about, right? So let's coming back to this list of questions. Um... I think I here we go. That's a funny one. Um from Brandon Nicholas Choi. Hey Shmi, how about doing some ski instruction tutorials since you used to be an instructor? I think some of you guys will know this. Many of you probably or possibly don't, but before or when I left school, before the world of work, I used to be a ski instructor for a bit of fun. Um teaching a little bit in the Alps in Italy, uh and then in New Zealand, which was awesome. I spent two three or four months, or three months ski seasons in New Zealand, had the most incredible time, had a 600 pound Subaru Leone, which was four months older than I am, that was the second car I'd owned, awesome fun out there, um, I don't necessarily think there's a huge crossover between skiing and cars, but when I have popped out my once a year ski video, I think you guys quite enjoy it, I love messing around, bright colours, um, clothing gear, and just being a bit silly, trying to do like flips over forwards and 360 jumps and that kind of silly stuff, but I don't think I'm necessarily qualified anymore to teach properly, so unfortunately I, I couldn't, but let us scroll down again, back to the bottom, here we go, wow, still one and a half thousand of you guys here, thank you so much, this is incredible, um, and still 105 messages per minute, um, here's a question from somebody called YouTuber, you know as much as I do, um, would you build a car? I think it would be quite interesting to have a project car. It seems to be the rage right now. Everybody is buying the cheapest of something and doing it up and changing it and modifying it or even building a kit car. But that's, this is one of those things that takes substantial amount of hours and commitment, which I find really hard, of course, with my travel schedule. I'm basically never in either of my homes anyway. Um, and then you consider that the time is split between the two of them and they're both in city centers where I don't really have garage spaces. So not yet, but I would love later on when I hopefully have more time in the future to do more racing events. I've been invited to stuff I'd love to do, but the training required would be weeks um, and more along the lines of tinkering with cars, stuff that you need space and time available to, to do that. Um, so let's come back down here. Um, Oh, here's, here's an interesting one about a car in general. Um, Blitzy team, would you buy the new Porsche Mission E? So when I was at the Porsche factory seeing my new GT3 being built, you could see all of the building works for the Mission E plants that are going up in Zuffenhausen. Uh, Zuffenhausen in Stuttgart, small area, basically Porsche everywhere. But basically they want to build this new car, the Mission E, their electric car, on site where Porsche are traditionally based. And it's a huge operation. They clearly have very, very big intentions with that car. And we don't even know any performance details, numbers, statistics about it at all yet. So when Tesla have all of these Tesla Roadster numbers, I think we should wait and see what Porsche have coming. Honestly, I think that car is going to be quite impressive. So maybe I'll end up with one, but I think it's still significantly far afield that it's not on my radar yet at this stage. Um, so, hey, here's a question um, from Marco. Chorak, maybe? Um, hi from Croatia. When are you may be coming to Croatia? Well, I came on Fuel Faction Enna, where we went from Ljubljana down through Croatia to Montenegro and Bosnia, the most epic drive ever. And I am adamant that I need to come back because I want to see Dubrovnik more. I want to see that scenery around there more and drive the road. So uh, hopefully at some point, because from Frankfurt, it's only about one and a half thousand kilometers, I will be able to jump in the car, drive down to Croatia again, and enjoy the roads and scenery down there. So I'd love to. Loads of questions about Australia. Uh, when am I coming to Australia? Uh, I would love to come to Australia. There is a huge following from you guys in two countries that I notice regularly, Australia and India. I would love to come out to both of them, but um, obviously a long way away. I don't know that much. If anybody can help with stuff going on that I should come and visit and see, please do ping a message to the Shmi Facebook page, and hopefully one day we can... Uh, tie something in, and I can make it out that way, and come and join you guys down in Australia. Um, here's an interesting one. So, uh, from Dorifto Kingu, how do you get, in quotation marks, uh, free...
cars from different manufacturers when you're traveling. How does that work? So as you guys know, I'm frequently on press launches when I go to an event with a manufacturer where they will arrange everything, the flights and the hotel, and obviously I will have an opportunity to drive their new car and create a video about it, which I try and do creating, I would say, very informative videos, showing you the cars, telling you the numbers, explaining the cars, and a bit about the experience of what it's like to drive. So that's clearly a very well-structured uh, occasion and event. But then there are other times when I go to a country for a longer period, say Dubai, when I was driving in the R8 Spider, the TTRS, and then we swapped the TTRS for the RS3 sedan. And that's obviously talking to the manufacturer and saying, I'm going to be here. I'd love to shoot some videos. You have some cars I'd love to drive and make content with. And they provide, you know, an option to, to have access to the car. Um, there's no, it's not like making a formal agreement or anything like that. It's more um, if there's an opportunity to do something cool, obviously I'll make a video uh, for you guys if I can come up with, with different ideas. So I would say there's a lot of planning, logistics and arranging to make sure that I always have varied content. That's really important that when I go to a different place, um, we're not just doing the same thing over and over and over again. I mean, it'd be really fun to drive, let's say, an AMG GTR every time I ever got off a plane somewhere. But it would also be immensely repetitive and you'd probably get very bored very quickly. Um, let's head back to the questions. Why have you not done a review on the Range Rover Velar from Oscar Brown? Good question, Oscar. Why have I not done a review on the Velar? Well, in short, I haven't been invited to do a video with Range Rover, in fact, with JLR at all recently. Um, and the Velars, I just haven't had an opportunity or the car really, I don't, I don't know, been in the right place. Maybe at some point, because I'd love to see more about how the tech in there works and the entertainment system and that kind of thing. Um, so, um, <laughs> uh, what do we have here? There's been lots of, what do you prefer, Project One or Valkyrie? And a really interesting thing, so this question here from uh, Asim Yousaf, uh, Project One from Aston Martin, uh, no, Project One from Mercedes AMG, or Valkyrie from Aston Martin Red Bull. Neither car is actually the very, very final, final car. What we've seen have both basically concepts. So we need to see more on that and see what they're capable of. I think we're quite a long way from either of them hitting the road. What's really interesting about that actually is that McLaren obviously just dropped the Senna, which I shot my introduction video with because I went to the Winter Ball, the McLaren Winter Ball at the factory where they revealed it. They've just released that and it's going to be delivered to customers during 2018, 2018 and 19. So in the hypercar land, they're the last to reveal but the first to deliver. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that almost head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head battle uh, progresses in time. Certainly, I would love to have an opportunity to put them all together at some point and shoot some videos. I think that would be really, really cool. So, fingers crossed on that. A few questions. What do I think about it? The first thing that I think about it, because in my first video, I kept it very uh, informative and detailed. The first thing I think about it is, one, it was never designed to be pretty. It was designed to be exceptionally functional, and this is very much a demonstration of form following function. It is all about the aerodynamics. There is a lot of trick stuff. I mean, we only got a very short opportunity to walk around it and have a look at it, but you poke your eyes in everywhere and you can see active flaps in through the front. You can see all sorts of things going on literally on every part of it. Gurney flaps on the front bonnet that shape the way the air goes over the car. Everything is just ludicrously aero based. And that's what makes it look a bit peculiar in pictures. When you see it in person, you're standing there looking at every detail like your jaw just drops because it's so far ahead of anything else in terms of incorporating that level of aero on a road car. It's almost beyond GT3 level cars. It's like, you know, when you stood next to previous generations of Formula One cars and you have, you're looking at all the wings and flaps and carbon bits. It's like that again. You're looking at things that you don't understand, but you can loosely tell that they're there to make the thing fast. And the rumors I've heard about how fast the center is going to be, it is going to be absolutely nuts. So everybody who's getting one is going to enjoy it an awful lot. I imagine there will not be much closer to that that you can drive out and about on the roads. So let's head back to the questions because you guys are still hitting me with an awful lot of things here. Um, lots of smiley faces coming through, lots of hands coming through. Oh, this is one I've seen a few times about collaborations with other YouTubers and things that's interesting for you guys to see. Of course, the other British guys, we cross over every now and then. Paul, Supercars of London, Sam C. Through Glass, James, Mr. JWW, Sam, Sam Delaney. You've seen the videos recently with Parker from Vehicle Virgins. 
A um, few questions about Ale from Solomon Drin, uh, James Stradman. Of course, we've all met each other, but living in different continents doesn't necessarily help. But yeah, if we cross paths, for sure we make videos together. It's always good fun. Um, and I think you guys love seeing different people that you follow crossed over between videos. Most of the time, as you know, I tend to try and do my own thing. I like to create content that's a bit more exclusive, a bit more specific um, to, I guess, my interests, very much on a technical nerdy level, looking at cars, the details, the figures, new cars. So a bit different, but occasionally I like to throw in the vlogs a bit more about what's going on, what it's like living with cars and the places we're going and the things we're doing. Um, oh yeah, of course, I miss Doug DeMuro. I've never met Doug. Um, he's one of the few that I've never really met. I'd love to meet him at some point. So fingers crossed we cross paths somewhere in the world on an event. Now, what else do we have here? It's so hard to keep up. <laughs> Um, so, I've seen once or twice about motorbikes, um, Saleh Mihailov, sorry for the pronunciation, would you like to ride some motorbikes, or buy a motorbike? I've, I've never been a motorbikes guy, I'm very much four wheels rather than two, um, I don't really know why, because you get quite, I imagine you get quite a lot of adrenaline rush from motorbikes, obviously there's a safety element, um, keep hearing stories of friends having accidents on bikes, or even in London, bikes being stolen. That seems to be the biggest problem right now. I'm probably glad that I avoided that, or I'd probably have a bike that's been stolen by now. Um, but it's never really, motorbikes have never really been entirely my thing. I've just never really jumped at them. Cars always, motorbikes not so much. Um, I've seen a few, what's your favourite Lamborghini? So we'll pick one from Stephen Royal, maybe? Um, what's your favourite Lamborghini? So I did mention that I obviously am not a big fan of the Aventador or Hurricane at the moment, um, but I think the Urus is quite interesting. But I did a video, was it at the beginning of the year in March, where I visited Perigo Cars in Switzerland and drove their Lamborghini Miura S. And that thing was pure awesome. Um, definitely, if money was no object, a Miura is just an absolute dream. Um, proper classical Lamborghini. That was what the Lamborghinis were originally made to be. So the Miura is definitely my favourite Lamborghini, even though it's a classic, which, as we've discussed previously, isn't normally a big thing here on the YouTube channel. Uh, so, back to the questions. Um, da -da -da, there's so much stuff flying through. Have I ever thought about buying a Ferrari next to the FF from Jesper Stolk? Um, yeah, definitely would think about it. Um, I think when it comes to the Ferraris, basically they have you know two two formats, the V12s and the V8s. The V8s with the twin turbocharged engines haven't really captured my excitement um, at this stage. Um, obviously, there'll be a hardcore 488 at some point, especially a GTO, whatever it's going to be called, and that could be a very interesting car. But for me, it's really about the V12s. And if you're going to have a Ferrari front engine V12, is there really much point in having two? And I'm dismissing LaFerrari here because I can't afford a LaFerrari. <laughs> um, you know, like an FF alongside... An F12 doesn't necessarily make much sense, a GTC4 Lusso alongside an 812. The 812 was one of my favourite cars that I have driven on video. The day I had with that thing at Fiorano, the test track in Maranello, was phenomenal. Um, but obviously, it's a lot of money, 812 alongside FF doesn't make sense. So, that's never um, happened uh, so far. So, here's another question. Sucrado, would you sell all your cars in exchange for one hypercar of your choice? Now, I've done a video about this, a Fuel for Thought video about this, because as much as I would love a hypercar, say a 918, a P1, or one of the next generation cars, I wouldn't want to do it if I wasn't in a position that I could still own other cars, because I like driving my cars a lot. I like road trips, I like track days, I like running them properly. And if you start looking at the costs of a hypercar, the servicing, the brakes, the windscreen if you break it, you start to realise that this is quite scary. For example, a set of pads on a P1 is like £12,000, a set of discs on a P1 is like £50,000, and you're going to get through those quite quickly. A windscreen, if you need a new windscreen, is something like £13,000. So if you drive them frequently, you're going to end up with very big bills, significantly bigger bills to run one car than run a whole fleet of cars, which offer you variety, the ability to have them in different countries, um, different ownership experiences, the ability to tinker with different cars, um, 
and, and I just prefer, you know, I like going on events and things where we can take more than one. And some of the guys who work with me, Benzine, uh, Joe Achilles, and the, the other guys helping with the social media stuff can jump into different cars. We can all drive together. And you lose all of that if you only have one. So I'm not a massive fan of the one hyper car thing. I won't do it, uh, even though obviously I could sell the LT, the GT8, the FF, the GTR, the GT3, and go and buy a 918, let's say. But it would then take away a lot of what I love about these things, which is just using them, because I'd be constantly worried about how much it costs and whether I can afford it, basically. So I will only go down the hypercar route at a time when I'm able to afford a hypercar alongside a couple of other cars and still enjoy it without feeling stressed. You know, you don't want to buy a car if you genuinely cannot drive it. Yes, there's a collection element. There's a, an investment element. But for me... I'm never going to order a car unless I'm going to drive the thing. I'm never going to buy a car that I'm not going to put a mile on because I want it to be worth more. So I want to do it when I'm comfortable. Um, another question from John Terpettis. What are your thoughts on the Devel 16? Well, the guys from Devel are super, super friendly. They were really, really nice when I met them at the stand. They have big ambitions making the Devel 16 with 5,000 horsepower from a V16 engine. It is crazy, but... It has to be said, that engine exists, it has that much power, and it works. There's even a video of that on YouTube that you can see. Um, the car's design is very much a long shape dragster base. So whether it's going to drive around a corner um, needs to be seen. But in terms of what it's for, driving a straight line, it's going to be incredibly fast. And to be honest, I wish them the best of luck to make the project because they're chasing all of our dreams, right? To have the idea to make a car to go out, present it to a concept to the world in a motor show, get people interested in it, and hopefully actually end up making them for real. I mean, I would love that in the future. I'm sure many of you guys would love that. How many of us have scribbled down designs of what we'd like a car to be to look like and to do? I think I'm not, I'm not speaking for myself when I say that is a guy's dream. So full credit to them for what they've uh, managed to, to do so far and how they've managed to get it so far. Um... A few here. So Andre says, what happened to your TBR? TBR Griffith, very much on order. Um, they haven't released them yet. We've just had the um, concept prototype first car. I mean, it is the actual car um, running uh, running powertrain, etc. So they're hopefully on for deliveries around a year from now, a little bit more. So fingers crossed my allocation ends up being an early car. And if it does, you will be seeing more from TBR in the very near future. Um and that ties on. A lot of people said, if you could bring back a lost car company, what would it be? Like that question there from the gear knob. Um, and I think TVR, it is amazing that TVR is back. They're a huge part, obviously, of the British automotive industry. They've come back a few times, different iterations, but it's lovely to see them again. Um, what do we have here? Um, <laughs> my suspect said, smiles per mile. Um, that's a phrase I've used a few times. I've regularly said smiles per mile across my content in the past. And smiles per mile is the Shmi take on it. So are you going to do that um, per review or in the look back this year? That's an interesting idea to look back at this year and rate cars in a smiles per mile scale. Let me know if you'd be interested to see that. Um, I would like to have a look back at the end of this year because I've I've been keeping loose tabs on what this year has involved for me. And I read down it and it's like, yes, I, I test drove hypercar, 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 hypercar. I went to crazy location, crazy location, crazy location, crazy location. And then I have to pinch myself because it feels like a dream. These opportunities are just unbelievable. And I would love to share with you again a recap of this year because I just can't get my head around it. And thank you to all of you who make that possible um, and to the brands that invite me to these opportunities. It is absolutely out of this world. It's been a crazy, crazy year. A um, few comments about track days and doing more track days. So I definitely like to obviously go around tracks more if I can. Um, it's an expensive thing to do, uh, but it's really fun. Um, obviously, the laps like I did with the LT Spider at Spa, and I got down to two minutes and 40 seconds, which is, is quite quick. 2.40 at Spa is like, well, maybe an LT can do a, a, a bit, a little bit quicker, but we're talking like in the 2.30s somewhere. We're not quicker than that. So really what felt on it for a car that um, I'm driving on track with, let's say, a very expensive bill if it goes wrong. Um, so you have to be a little bit conscious of that element as well. So um, let's head back here. Lots of questions about things we've already talked about, guys. So maybe watch the video back and you'll see some of those um, coming up there. So here's a question. The Destroyer 32, how do you find time to actually have a life with the amount of traveling you do? And this is quite an interesting one because obviously you guys don't see behind the scenes away from YouTube, but it's actually really difficult because I've been on planes this year about 85 times. I've also taken 
about 25 euro tunnels or ferries, which obviously take up time as well. Ferries often overnight, I think about four or five ferries. Um, and as well as that, I drive a lot. So I drive maybe 50,000 miles, 75, 80,000 kilometers per year uh, as well. So I spend an awful lot of time on the move. I spend very few nights in what I would consider my own bed, um, probably 100 or so a year. I, I don't know the exact number, but um, few and far between. So I spend a lot of time go, 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 go. And then when I get home, I still have things to do. You know, washing doesn't do itself, cleaning the house, um, seeing family um, wherever possible. So it's a very difficult balance to be able to have a life and be able to see friends around this much traveling. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but I couldn't do this forever. I don't think anybody could do this forever. You look at the other or other YouTubers, everybody eventually, you know, you go through phases, you can you could do this. And maybe early in 2018, I just need to slow down a touch from the traveling element so that I can take a little bit more time to actually catch up on my own life. Um, right. So what do we have here? Are you going to Sweden soon? Comes from the hunter. Good question. Am I going to go to Sweden again soon? I'd love to do a road trip around Norway, Sweden, maybe over to Finland, uh, Scandinavian trip. Um, but no plans, I'd say, right at the moment. Um, watch this space because maybe that could be a fuel faction. Maybe. Just, just putting it out there. Just pushing it out there as an idea. Um, I've seen quite a few on this one. The planning of road trips, a uh, video about the ins and outs. So this comes from Lee Banton, but I've seen this on Instagram messages and stuff. So I'm pretty good, if I say so myself, at planning road trips, at loading up Google Maps, picking where I want to go, choosing hotels, getting all the bookings done, getting everything right. So maybe I can do an FFT at some point soon about how do you plan a road trip? How do you plan an epic adventure and how to find routes, how to find roads, how to find places to visit, what you need to prepare on your car, making sure that you're taking a good co-driver, that's number one, um, and all of that. So maybe that's that's an option um, in due course. Um, I've seen a few, do you speak German? Do you know what? I genuinely thought when I came to Frankfurt that I would learn to speak some more German quicker. Firstly, I've not been here that much yet. I've only actually had about 30 nights here in Frankfurt, so bear with me. Um, but the thing is, this city feels like it's not Germany. Everyone speaks English and many people aren't German. You go to a shop or a restaurant or whatever, and you're being served by, you know, an Italian guy or a Japanese guy or not a German. So everybody speaks English better than they do German. So I haven't yet learned much. I can walk into a restaurant and ask for ein Tisch für zwei bitte or uh, some basic food. You know, ich hätte gerne eine Schnitzel mit Pommes or Schnipo, as it's called. You know, small, small, useful German phrases, but not, uh, not the details. And now, guys, please don't call me out on my pronunciation. It's not about that. At least I'm trying. Um, what else do we have in here? So yes, a few people saying you can't listen or whatnot, but guys, um, this will stay up on the channel. I think I've run over an awful lot of questions today, so watch this space to um, go over things if you'd like to see them again later. Although I just realized that I say that, but the guys who are asking the questions can't hear me saying it. I'm sorry. Um, what else do we have? Wow, you guys are amazing. You're still asking so quickly. Um, oh, that's an interesting one. Adam Kimperman, will you ever work on a specific MSO project? Something along the lines of an MSO HS. I would love to. That's very much, I suppose, the dream kind of thing to create a bespoke car. And look at my friend's MSO R that I filmed recently, the MSO R Spider that I filmed, but he has the coupe as well. They are stunning, such cool cars. So I'd love to, in the future, do something like that. But obviously, that again requires budget to bend and pay for it and create the car. So nothing like that in the works um, at this stage. Um, so let's just pick out one or two more here, guys. Um, and then we will wrap up. So I'm just watching your final questions rolling in. And I'm going to have to pick something. Um, okay, interesting topic from Chatter290. Can you buy an expensive car? and not lose too much money by selling it within a year and with only a few thousand miles. And yes, you can. I talked a bit about this with my Ferrari, for example. I bought that car as a four-year-old Ferrari FF. The market was quite low at the time. And genuinely, I'm not going to have lost much money on it if I sold it now. So you can. It's like buying anything valuable. It's supply and demand. If demand is low at some point and supply is plentiful, the price comes down. So if you buy something at a cheap point in the market, you can make money when you then sell it later on. It's a difficult game, of course. It's gambling because ultimately cars will come down unless they're completely special, exclusive, whatever kind of cars. 
Um, but you can. And I think if I take every car that I have owned to date in my life and add up the amounts of money that I made on them or lost on them, I've actually broken about even. I've not gone down. Things like even my one series, my BMW one series, I owned that for two years, did nearly 30,000 miles in it, and only lost a couple of thousand pounds because I bought a car at a good time and I sold it when there was a lot of demand. So you can, you know, play it, play it right. It doesn't have to be uh, a very expensive game if you think about things. Um, what are, from Isaac Go, what are the other cars that are on order aside from the Griffith and the Ford GT? So I did a video with my model car cabinet showing you around my 118 scale replicas where I alluded to the spots that were going to be filled by future cars. And obviously you know about the AMG GTR that arrived, you know about the Porsche GT3 that's inbound, you know about the Griffith, you know about the Ford GT, and you know about the Focus RS Edition. But there are a couple of sneaky cars coming beyond that. I'm gonna keep it a secret for now. I'm sorry to torture like that, but I think let's let the cars that are inbound in the near future have their space and uh, I guess their content before we move on to the things that are beyond that. But there's some exciting stuff. And believe me, as always, I'm very much looking forward to sharing with you um, in due course. Um, what else? <laughs> Say your intro. Hi, guys, I'm Shmi. Now I know. Hi, guys, I'm Shmi. Uh, you guys know I'm Shmi. You watch the videos. You see them all the time. Um, but I think it's part of the tradition. I've been doing it for years and years and years. It's just the way I start my videos. It's a signature, signature part of the content. So um, I think I'm going to stick doing it. You know, actually, I looked in my stats last night, and still about 60% of views come from non-subscribers. So there are still more people watching these videos that aren't subscribed than the guys that are subscribed. Now, obviously, I really appreciate you guys, the subscribers, but... It would be nice, you know, we need to get more of you, more members of the squad. That's what we're going for, right? Um, so let's just pick a last question here. What should it be? Let's, I'm, just, I'm just reading your last things that are firing in. Um, oh my goodness, it's now gone way too fast. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have said that, should I? I shouldn't have give, given you guys. Well, I think, I think, you know what, let's just pick for the last. Should we do this again? If you enjoyed this opportunity to chat and just run over th some things about the car world, let me know. Um, I've enjoyed reading all of your questions and chatting to you guys here. It's been really good fun um, way to spend a bit of the afternoon and to talk about YouTube in general. But I, I will leave it there. Thank you very much, as always, guys. I really appreciate your support and for watching these videos and for ultimately making all of this possible. But let's wrap this one up. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you again very, very soon. Cheers.